So let's say we were trying to find the pressure at this particular point in this liquid and compare it to the pressure at this particular point in this liquid. How do you determine the pressure at a given point in a liquid? Well, to determine this, all you have to use is this simple equation. The pressure at a given point equals the density of that liquid multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity, multiplied by h, which represents the height from the point you're interested in to the surface of that liquid. So if we wanted to determine the pressures at these two given points, we would just have to simply use this equation. For example, if we wanted to find the pressure at this given point, we would need to find the density of this liquid. So we would look in a textbook and see the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. We know g is just the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared. And we know this particular point is 10 meters from the surface of this liquid. So therefore, we would plug in 10 meters. And if you plug in all those values, we would get a pressure of 100,000 pascals. So now we know the pressure 10 meters from the surface of water is 100,000 pascals. However, what's the pressure at this given point? Well, again, we would just use the same equation. We would find the density of water, multiply it by the acceleration due to gravity, and multiply it by, in this case, 20 meters, because this point is 20 meters from the surface of this liquid. So we would plug in 20 meters. And if we plug in all those values, we would get a pressure of 200,000 pascals. So the pressure at this given point is 200,000 pascals. So now we know the pressure at this point is 100,000 pascals and the pressure at this point is 200,000 pascals. And if you think about it, this makes sense. It makes sense that the deeper you go in a liquid, the higher the pressure will be. Because at this point, we have 10 meters of water above this point applying a pressure. However, at this point, we have 20 meters of water above this point applying a pressure. So it makes sense that the deeper down you go, the higher the pressure. And we see that, that that's represented in this equation. We see the larger the height, aka the larger the distance from a point to the surface of that volume, the larger the pressure. Because if you increase the height, you increase the pressure. That's what this equation tells us. So now we know this point has a higher pressure relative to this point because again, this height variable influences the pressure, which is logical. This makes sense, this is intuitive. However, let's try another example. Let's say we have these two containers of water. Let's say we have this wide container and let's say we have this thin container. And let's say in this wide container, we're interested in the pressure five meters from the surface. And let's say in this thin container, we're interested in the pressure 15 meters from the surface. How do we determine these two pressures? Well, again, we simply use this equation. So for this particular example, if we wanted to determine the pressure, we would need to know the density of this liquid multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity, and multiplied by the height, the height from this point to the surface of that liquid. So we see this point is five meters from the surface, so we would plug in five meters. And if you plug in all those values, we would see this point has a pressure of 50,000 pascals. However, what's the pressure at this particular point? Well, again, we would plug in all those same values, the density of this liquid multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity, but this point is 15 meters from the surface. So we would plug in 15 meters and we would get a pressure of 150,000 pascals. So we know this point has a pressure of 150,000 pascals. However, you may think, because this example, because it's wider, you may think there's more volume of water above this point. So therefore, it should apply a larger pressure. However, if you carefully analyze this equation, you'll realize this length has no effect. This, this width of this container has no effect. It's not involved and included into this equation because it doesn't matter. The variable that matters is the height because it's this height that tells you the amount of liquid above that point applying a pressure. So the point is sometimes an exam may try to trick you by comparing these two examples, but the point is the width 
doesn't matter. The variable that matters is the height. And the, the deeper you go, the larger the pressure. And again, that depth is represented in this H term, this height term. However, let's try another example. Let's say we have these two containers, one container of water and one container of mercury. And let's say we're trying to determine the pressure 10 meters from the surface in both of these containers. How do we determine these pressures? Well, again, we simply use this equation. We find the density of that liquid multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity, and multiplied by the length, the essentially the distance from the point we're interested in to the surface of that liquid. So if you plugged in all those values, we would get a pressure at this particular point of 100,000 pascals. However, what's the pressure at this particular point in this mercury solution, 10 meters from the surface? Well, again, we would just plug in all these variables. So we would look in a physics textbook and see the density of mercury is 14,000 kilograms per meters cubed. So therefore, we would plug in the density of this liquid, 14,000 kilograms per meters cubed. Again, we would multiply it by g, the acceleration due to gravity, and we would multiply it by 10 meters because we're interested at this point, which is 10 meters from the surface. So we would plug in 10 meters. And if we saw that, we would get a pressure of 140,000 pascals. So now we know the pressure at this particular point, 10 meters from the surface of this water solution is 100,000 pascals. However, the pressure at this particular point, 10 meters, from the surface in this mercury solution is 140,000 pascals. And this makes sense, this is logical. Because in both these examples, we're 10 meters from the surface, so that's the same. However, the difference is the density, and we see mercury has a larger density than water. So because mercury is more dense, therefore it makes sense that it would apply a larger pressure. So even though the length is the same in both these examples, mercury is more dense. So it makes sense that the pressure 10 meters from the surface of mercury will have a higher pressure than 10 meters from the surface of water. So that's another variable that influences the pressure at a particular point, the density of that liquid. And we can see, based on the way this equation is, the higher the density of a liquid, the larger the pressure at a given point. So hopefully now you know how to determine the pressure at a particular point in a liquid. All you need to use do is use this straightforward equation. Find the density of the liquid you're interested in, multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity, and multiplied by h, the height at that given point from the surface of that liquid. So we know we have this container of water 10 meters from the surface, we have a pressure of 100,000 pascals. And that's true at any of these given points because all these points are 10 meters from the surface. However, what if we were to open this container? So what if we were to open this container? Now what would be the pressure at this particular point? Well, something important to realize is we have an atmospheric pressure. For example, let's say we're in the lab and we create a pressure of five pascals. Well, if we have an atmospheric pressure of five pascals, that five pascals of pressure is applying pressure on this liquid. And that pressure from this atmosphere is going to influence the pressure at this given point. So something important to realize, this equation that we've been using this entire video tells you the gauge pressure, which is essentially the pressure due to the fluid, due to the fluid. So what is the gauge pressure at this particular point, 10 meters from the surface of, of water? Well, we use this equation and we get 100,000 pascals. So we know the gauge pressure is 100,000 pascals, the pressure due to this volume of water above this point. However, if we also have this atmospheric pressure, that's going to increase the absolute pressure. So therefore, if we wanted to determine the absolute pressure at this given point, we would need to find the gauge pressure, which is again the pressure due to this liquid above this point, and we would need to add that to the, the atmospheric pressure.
So again, we already explained how to determine the gauge pressure. The gauge pressure due to the liquid is 100,000 pascals. However, because we also have this atmospheric pressure of 5 pascals, we would need to add that 5 pascals to this gauge pressure. So we would get an absolute pressure of 100,005 pascals. So there are these three types of pressures you need to be aware of. This gauge pressure, which is the pressure due to the fluid above a given point, which we determine using this equation that we've been using. There's the atmospheric pressure. And then there's the absolute pressure, the pressure when you add the gauge pressure to the atmospheric pressure. However, what is the absolute pressure in this particular example? Because we know in this particular example, we have a closed container. So therefore, if you want to determine the absolute pressure, it would simply equal the gauge pressure. Because even though we have this atmospheric pressure, because we have this closed container, this atmospheric pressure cannot influence the pressure. So therefore, if you want to determine the absolute pressure, you need to find the gauge pressure. And because the atmospheric pressure doesn't influence it, Therefore, the absolute pressure would equal the atmospheric pressure. And you may wonder, where does this atmospheric pressure come from? Well, if we were to draw this container a bit smaller, we realize we're on Earth. And on Earth, we have an atmosphere. So we have an atmosphere with air, and this air has a certain density. It's a very low density, but it still has a density. So if we have a large height of dense air above us, all those air molecules is going to apply a pressure. And that is the source of this atmospheric pressure. So the point is there are two types of pressure. There's the gauge pressure, which is the pressure due to a liquid applying pressure on a given point. And then there's this atmospheric pressure. And these two pressures influence the absolute pressure. And if you add the gauge pressure, which again, we determine using this equation, and add it to the atmospheric pressure, that gives you the absolute pressure. 